Hello, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be talking about cultural context right now. Um, and there's some, some terms that uh, we're going to cover first here. So the first term is iconography. Now, the, the very start of that word icon uh, comes from the Greek, uh, which means image. Um, so, you know, the writing of images is what the translation is. Uh, and images, icons, are the method through which cultural conventions are carried forward through the generations in whatever culture we're talking about. Um, this can also apply to a system of images understood by a culture or group. Um, and when we say group, we could be referring to like a, lo a geographical location, um, you know, a, a, a group of people that'll have the same faith, or perhaps maybe a point in time. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit, a little bit more. So cultural context is often expressed through symbols and the reading of symbols. Um, and just, just so we're, we're all know what we're talking about here, visual, symbols are visual images that represent something more than a literal meaning. Now here's the thing about cultural context. Um, the subject matter of images of iconography isn't obvious to anyone who's unfamiliar with the system in use. We're going to get to some examples too. So, and every culture has specific iconographic uh, or symbolic practices um, and they can change over time. So these, these aren't uh, fixed meanings, they're shifting. All right, we've got two symbols here. Um, these are good symbols to sort of illustrate what cultural context is. You may recognize one more than the other. Um, so the one on the left here uh, is called the swastika. And, you know, in, in contemporary um, visual culture, it's often, you know, most commonly associated with uh, the Nazi party of the 1940s. Um, but it didn't always start out that way. It started out as a Buddhist symbol um, that celebrated the, or sorry, represented the cycle of existence. Uh, it's co-opted in the 1930s by the, um, the German Nazi party. Uh, and, you know, that, that changed meaning, if, if you were viewing this symbol pre the 1930s, it would mean something different. Um, we can't erase history. So sometimes historical uh, goings on will change the reading of an icon. The other symbol um, is called a caduceus. This one um, started out as a symbol for the gods and goddesses of the ancient Middle East. And it's now, the, now it's understood to be the symbol of the medical profession. There's, you know, lots of reasons why that is. It's not really a, a class on symbolism, but the point I wanted to illustrate here is that um, symbols are shifting over time and culture. Another point I want to illustrate is that sometimes symbols look similar, but have different meanings. And depending on, you know, again, time period or culture that you're viewing these symbols or images, the meanings would be different. So we've got the, the Mercedes Benz logo on our left here. Um, again, you don't need to know like when it was created and all that. This is just, just some extra information. And then, of course, the peace sign um, created 1958. That was it. I remember when I first was doing research um, to put together this lecture on cultural context. I was surprised to, to learn that the Mercedes logo is actually quite a bit older than, than the peace sign. Um, and it initially, uh, it was a British symbol for nuclear disarmament. All right. There's something on this artwork uh, further down in the unit. Um, you're going to actually watch this video from our friends at Smart History that are talking about some of the symbols um, in this uh, Arnolfini portrait. I'm just going to skip over that. We'll come back to that in another uh, part of the, the unit. But the next thing I want to talk about is visual metaphors. This often comes up when we're talking about um, symbolism and cultural context. Uh, so I'm asking you all, what is a metaphor? So this is something that's regarded as representative um, or symbolic of an abstract concept. You often hear about them in um, English class uh, comparisons, um, metaphors or comparisons kind of similar to similes. 
The thing about visual metaphors is they are often less obvious and explicit than conventional symbols. We, you know, we saw the swastika and the caduceus, and those are pretty classic examples of symbols, uh, symbolism. Visual metaphor is um, a up to a little bit more interpretation uh, than, you know, those, those type of symbols that we just saw are. They're often based on cultural metaphors though, so they require the context of culture to be understood. All right, just back it up here. Just so I'm not flying onto the next slide super quickly. All right, so a good example of this um, is this uh, still life painting from the 17th century. And a still life uh, really just refers to an artwork that represents a, a grouping of usually inanimate objects. Um, if there's a human in it, it's often called like a figure study or something like that. Sometimes still lifes are a useful exercise for artists to develop their skills. However, there's often a symbolic angle to them. And this particular one, the, the symbolic angle, if you couldn't guess it, is right in the title. Venitas is a Latin word, um, which means vanity. And a venitas still life is one that represents kind of the, the fleetingness of, of life and vain pursuits um, in an effort to get folks to kind of focus on the afterlife, which is uh, in Judeo-Christian thought, that's kind of the reward for living a, a righteous and just life. Um, so lots of symbols, uh, visual metaphors in this artwork that we can see that um, kind of represent like the shortness of human life. We've got uh, the candle that's almost burned down of course, the human skull. That's a, that's a pretty, pretty common mainstay for Venitas artworks. I've got like a, I'm not sure if this is a watch or a compass, but either way, it's, um, you know, representative of time kind of fle fleeting or finding your direction in life. We've also got down here a couple of perishables. I'm not sure if this is like an orange or like a notch or something like that, but at any rate, it's, um, a perishable uh, bit of food down there that isn't going to last forever, right? It's got its time and eventually it fades away. And the same goes for um, this flower that's right next to the skull. So some, some pretty, pretty obvious visual metaphors. Um, they may have meant something different in the 17th century. Like there might have been, you know, certain subtleties to, to parts of them that we're not getting, but pretty well this, this translates uh, pretty directly um, with using universal metaphors. Okay, one final example here. This is um, by Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. She was an artist that is considered to be a symbolist painter in that she uses a lot of symbolism in her work, um, but often her symbolism is um, part of her personal iconography. So it's, it's not stuff that, if you know her artwork, her body of artwork well, you may be able to unpack it, um, but some of it's a little bit difficult to read, kind of comes off a little bit more opaque. So, so part of Frida's story is that um, she was in a bus accident as a teenager and she broke her pelvis and I think part of her back and she was in this body brace that you can see, uh, the white part here and bedridden for a while while she healed. Um, and it caused, you know, this, this injury caused her lots of pain throughout her life. It, there was lots of health problems. She was, um, she couldn't have children after it. Uh, so that was, you know, a source of pain for her. You can see the tears in her eyes, which is kind of a, a universal visual metaphor, I guess. But we've got the title of the artwork, The Broken Column. We can see the, the uh, column here that's crumbling, this Grecian column that's representative of her spine. Um, you know, you often hear the spine referred to as the, the, the column of the body, the, you know, the load supporting beam of the body. And this one's not a healthy spine, right? But it's being healed. And she's also representing her pain, um, not just through the tears in her eyes, but the, uh, the little nails that are sticking into her skin. The background is also symbolic. Um, you know, it's not uh, artists do these type of things on purpose. Um, I had mentioned that she wasn't able to have children after her injury, her accident. Um, it's a barren, sorry, I've got, got a loud airplane going by right now. <laughs> It's, it's a barren wasteland that she's representing here. So it's sort of a reflection of her internal state as well as her external state. 
Okay, I hope that uh, sheds a little bit more light on the idea of cultural context. It's going to be coming up um, occasionally this term, and it's uh, it's a fairly important concept. So hopefully you uh, you're getting getting the gist of it. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>